When I play back this FLV video in the shockwave file here, what you're seeing is a sequence of images flashed on the screen in rapid succession, giving the illusion of motion. The number of frames displayed every second is known as the frame rate, and it's measured in frames per second, or FPS. The higher the frame rate, the more frames per second will be used to display the sequence of images, resulting in smoother motion. The trade-off, however, is that the higher frame rates require a larger amount of data to display the video, and therefore require more bandwidth on the part of the viewer. This video, for example, that you're watching uses a frame rate of 10 frames per second, which seems to be a good trade-off for the type of information we're covering here in these tutorials and the bandwidth resources of a typical VTC customer. NTSC video runs at 29.97 frames per second, and PAL runs at 25 frames per second. The reason for the odd frame rate dates back to the transition from black and white television to color TV signals where the 29.97 frame rate was chosen to ensure backwards compatibility with existing television sets. There are still 30 frames, but they run 0.1% slower than actual time, resulting in a final frame rate of 29.97 FPS. When working with compressed video in a format like flash video, frame rate can affect the quality of the video in unpredictable ways, depending on how you encode the video and its specific content. Lower frame rates provide less content to encode, which theoretically improves the quality, but also decreases the file size. At the same time, however, it makes it more likely that there are noticeable changes from one frame to the next, which require more data to encode. If you lower the frame rate and leave the data rate unchanged, the video may appear to stutter and the motion may look less fluid than desired. It's therefore usually a good idea that whenever the frame rate is reduced to use an evenly divisible ratio of the original frame rate, for example, if your source has a frame rate of 24 frames per second, then reduce the frame rate to 12 frames per second, 8 or 6, 4 and 3 and 2 are also available options. Again, these are all divisible into 24 evenly. If the source frame rate is 30 frames per second, in most cases you can adjust the frame rate to 15, 10 or 6 and so on. If your video is more than 10 minutes long, then audio will drift noticeably out of sync if you do not adhere to the 29.97 FPS frame rate or an accurate even division for lower frame rates, such as 14.98, which is half of 29.97. Let me now move on to the next movie and cover yet one more very important video term, and that's pixel aspect ratio.